This is the statement on the amicable resolution of the Bino versus LSAC lawsuit, LSAC being the Law School Admission Council. I'm not going to read the entire thing here. I want to instead call your attention to the key highlighted paragraph that I wanted to show you, which is right here. And I'll put the link to this press release in the chat as well, in case you would like to take a further look at the entire thing later, for those of you who were not aware of this new story. So basically, the key takeaway is that LSAC has apparently agreed to make some degree of changes to the law school admission process for Mr. Bino and Ms. Taylor, the other prospective applicant in this case. Consistent with the party's agreement, being LSAC and the applicants, LSAC will complete the work of research and development within the next four years, which will enable all prospective law school applicants, all prospective law school students to take an exam administered by LSAC that does not have the current analytical reasoning section, but continues to test, assess those abilities. I'm making that text a little bit larger in case it's tough to see it on whatever device you're on. So basically, LSAC will complete this work, this work being research and development into alternative ways to assess analytical re reasoning skills. And that work will enable all prospective law school students to take an exam administered by LSAC without the current games section, analytical reasoning being games, but continues to test those skills in some other way. Now, let's look at the mainstream media headlines and articles around this story. Click on Detroit, which did an interview with the lead attorney in this case, says LSAT to drastically change. The LSAT that students take today will look substantially different. That, what else? They said something about the drawing portion. They are removing the drawing portion for all students, not just those with disabilities. Now, is that what the joint press statement says? Are they removing the drawing portion, aka games, for all students? If we go back to the press statement language, it says, within the next four years, LSAC will complete the work of research and development, and that work will enable all prospective law students. Is enabling the same as requiring, and is completing the work of research and development within the next four years, the same as changing the exam within the next four years. To me, there is a potential difference there. Now, I've spoken with the plaintiff's attorney. I actually was potentially going to be called as a witness in this case to testify on the fact that logic games essentially require diagramming or that one is at a severe disadvantage if they cannot reasonably diagram. So I know the attorney, he's a good guy. I think he's acting in good faith here, but his statements to the press, to me, do not seem to be in line with the wording of this press statement. Let's look at another article here. On CNN, CNN, obviously very mainstream publication, saying now it's changing for everyone. And they interviewed the, the prospective law student, Mr. Bino. They interviewed the plaintiff's attorney as well, and whose name is Jason Turkish. And he's, he's in, under the impression that the test will change for everyone. Now, he was quite understandably upset when LSAC released this statement to the public just a couple of days ago in response to the mainstream media articles. They say, and I won't read the entire thing, should there be any significant changes to format, research and development, followed by several stages of pilot testing would be required. So it's too early to speculate on how the test will evolve as a result of ongoing research. So LSAC is making a much more moderate statement here than the mainstream media articles would lead you to believe. They're not even committing to making any changes at all. They're just saying, should there be any significant changes to format? So they're saying it's possible that all they will do is research and development. Now, if we go back to the press statement, it does suggest that LSAC will enable all law students to take an exam from LSAC without the game section. But again, will they be enable will they be requiring all applicants four years from now to take the LSAT without games? Or will they say you have a couple of options? If you're blind, you can take the non-games version. If you're not blind, 
you're taking the regular version we've come to know and love. It's hard to say. Enabling does not mean that everyone will be guaranteed to do this. If I give you a car, I am enabling you to drive around, but I, you might still need gas. How, enabling you to, have, to drive is, not this, is as simple as giving you a car and you're all set to go. There may be other qualifiers there. It's a little bit more open-ended than the attorney believes. Now, this attorney, he doesn't seem too happy because the drama continues. He released an open letter to LSAC, basically really annoyed with them for their statement that I just showed you, saying that LSAC's release is a departure from the jointly negotiated test text. It appears to walk back what was announced in the joint release. And this attorney is calling on LSAC to have a, a joint press appearance where they, will, where they will clarify their shared understanding of what exactly they both agreed to in their settlement. So lots of drama here, very open-ended. It's still too early to tell exactly what's going to happen four years from now. Will there be games on the exam? Will there not be games? We don't really know. I hope that at least the plaintiffs in this case will get to take an exam that is fair for them. But I really just wanted to show you all of these articles, all of these statements to show you just how important language is and just how relevant what you do on the LSAT in, and in LSAT logical reasoning is how relevant that is to the practice of law itself. I think it's entirely possible here that the plaintiff's attorney, Jason Turkish, agreed to something in the settlement that he thought had a different meaning from what was actually written in the text itself. The plaintiff's attorney has said to me repeatedly, when they say all here, all prospective law school applicants, all means all, all applicants will take an exam without games. Games will be a thing of the past. LSAC, however, is saying, should there be any future changes, we will let you know. And it's entirely possible that all LSAC will do is research and development, and they can make one little tweak to the exam, perhaps without re removing games entirely.